Uh, but I did want to start off by looking at uh, the larger cloud companies, the hyperscalers. They reported earnings just about the last, right after we did the last show about two weeks ago. So we've had some time to digest what those earnings mean for those companies and the AI landscape. And of course, I'm talking about Microsoft, Amazon, Google. Uh, those are the, the huge cloud players in the AI space right now. So I wanted to just get your take on what did you learn from those earnings in terms of read through what it means for other companies uh, now that we've had some time to digest those earnings. Yeah. And in one of the earliest podcast episodes, you said, what are you watching in earnings? And I'd said, I'm often watching hyperscalers and what are they saying about the market? Because that's one of the most important areas to watch. So I think we're a little overdue to break down kind of who the hyperscalers are, how much money's flowing through them, et cetera. And as you know, they all just report earnings. So this is a great time to kind of take stake of the overall AI industry. So when we talk about hyperscalers, that's uh, just the largest cloud companies that they drive sometimes more than 50% of kind of revenue into the AI space. And, you know, that sounds like a lot of concentration and a lot of this work does go to them internally, but also a lot of this work is for customers, right? Cloud computing as people come, they basically rent computing for a cost. It turns kind of your computing infrastructure into a service. And so it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. But what we had in the year, well, I should note first too, who are the hyperscalers, right? I shouldn't take for granted. People know that it's Meta, which is Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, and then also Alphabet, which is Google. And as a group, what we're watching with them is their capital expenditures. Because while there's different things that can go into a capital expenditure bucket, it's mostly kind of data center spend right now. That is the biggest expense item. And what we had in 2023 was relatively flat capital expenditures. The group as a whole spent $154 billion. Now, I've got the numbers in front of me. This year, they're spending $240 billion, 56% growth, right? So you can see where a lot of the returns in AI are coming from. Now, the bigger picture, of course, too, is we're constantly looking for where is the future going? And at the start of this year, with NVIDIA already running and all these stocks and people go, there's so many gains for an NVIDIA in 2023 and a lot of these AI stocks. How are they also seeing gains this year? Well, if we go back to the start of 2024, the expectations for spend in 2025, the year ahead, at that point, Wall Street had it at $194 billion in spend. As of today, those estimates are for $301 billion. My so gosh. the expectations, yeah, not for capital expenditures right this year, for the next year have gone up more than 50%, right? So David, you've been investing long enough, you know, generally when that happens, when you are that far ahead of consensus, right, you're going to make a lot of money in the stock market, mm -hmm. right? So let's look. We've got $301 billion now is the estimate for spend for next year. What does that represent? Well, it's still 25% plus growth rates. Also, we look ahead to 2026. What Wall Street will do is you can actually look at Wall Street estimates and know when they're kind of throwing their hands up and saying, we don't have any idea. And they just take growth and put in single digits, right? <laughs> so you'll see 50% growth, 40% growth, eight, 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 eight. We're already seeing growth rates for 2026 come up to where they're at. It's about 336 billion right now. So that's 12%. So we're already starting to see some of the uncertainty removed from 2026. So effectively, in just the past six months, why is NVIDIA back at all-time highs? Why have all these AI stocks done so well? Well, it's because of this kind of uncertainty being removed. 2025, the spending right now, NVIDIA's called it insane. I've seen other customers call it insane. And the uncertainty continues moving further and further out. So, David, I, I want to pause for a moment, you know, to give, you know, you a chance to ask any questions or, you know, we can move the discussion forward. But I think there's two important notes for everyone out there about what's going on with this hyperscaler spending. First, it's relatively new that this data center spending is going to categories that support AI. That's memory, GPUs, a lot of this kind of newer networking spend that I've been talking about. 
The vast majority of data center footprints, the actual data centers is for legacy infrastructure. So that's CPU centric infrastructure. So let's say there is 25% plus growth rates next year. Well, that might mean that AI centric growth rates are 60% and legacy growth rates are negative 30%, right? Those aren't specific numbers, but it's illustrative. So it shows how if you're investing in AI, you might say, well, it's it's 25% growth to data centers next year, but NVIDIA is actually projected to grow a higher. That's how, right? They are only levered to the AI side. Second, the growth rates of these large cloud companies are very reliant on AI growth. And we can kind of break down exactly what that looks like next. But if you're a Microsoft, if you're an Amazon, if you're a Google, right now, if you were to stop spending, turn the rockets down, the crown jewel in your portfolio of assets, your cloud computing division, would all of a sudden see its growth decelerate massively. So they don't really, it's, do they have the option to keep spending this way? The stronger incentive right now is, do they have the option to not do it? Because if they turned off the jets on spending right now, their growth rates in their cloud computing would collapse and it would be a bigger hindrance to their share price. And we, we could talk a little bit more about the why of that coming up. But again, I just, I want to kind of pause it there because I think that's, that's a very good overview of kind of the hyperscaler market. If you want, David, next, we could kind of break down, we could go down and look at, at a more individual company level, but whatever's most interesting. Yeah, I definitely want to go down a little bit more into the company level and talk about specifically the ones in our portfolio, but at this kind of 20,000 foot view of the AI market, it does, it seems consistent with what you're saying with what we've heard from other investors. Again, I, I hearken back to a month ago, David Tepper being like, I feel great about 2025. 2026, 2027 is less sure to me. So it makes sense that there's this kind of expectation being set by the market that there's not a lot of visibility into 26, 27 in terms of where are, are we going to be higher, lower than what consensus is now. How do you get comfortable figuring out where you are on that side of the fence? Is it looking at, hey, is the, the models and the capabilities of AI, is that what we need to be watching in terms of the improvements seem to be getting better? And as long as the models and the capabilities are getting better, that would suggest that growth is probably going to be above what these, again, Wall Street analysts plugging in 8% growth. Is that what you're looking at to feel confident on where you might be on kind of that over under, for lack of a better way of thinking about expectations in those out years? Yeah, I think there's definitely a few things you want to look at. Number one, does do all signs that you're reading say that the capabilities of these models continue increasing? Is, is there something out there that says that we are approaching some kind of uh, limit to growth? The other side of that is, are there more capabilities coming out there that's going to drive usage? We've talked a lot about agents and some of the catalysts for this next year. So I think you're looking at that. The third thing I'm looking at is really individual commentary from these companies and kind of to how Wall Street is treating these companies. Because I kind of gone to this a little bit at the end there of saying, well, the bigger risk right now is kind of taking down the spending because it would remove a lot of the growth rates. So one question is, at some point, is Wall Street going to react really harshly to the level of AI spending and cause some kind of change for these companies? And there was some um, kind of almost signs that that was happening at the start of earnings season, but I think that was potentially a little misread. And David, I could, if you wanted, I could go into the details on that. Like, um, But I would say overall, from this past earnings season we just went through, if anything, I think it was incredibly bullish for people in the AI space that we're going to see some very significant spend in 2025 that, again, it was ahead of the consensus at the start of the year, but it's even had the consensus a few months ago. Right. And I, th I think maybe on a future episode, it would be good for us to spend more time breaking down. Let's go through that bear case where AI kind of the promises or the pro productivity gains don't materialize because I think it's, uh, we hear so much from the AI advocates, whether it's Elon Musk or Jensen and NVIDIA just saying, hey, we're gonna have to redo all computing in the whole world. When you hear that, that definitely seems like a, this is gonna be a big 2027, 2028 story if you're re-architecting the whole world and how it's computing. So it's very easy to see the 
the bull case and how spend continues. But I do think on a future episode, we should spend some time playing the skeptic. Not that we have to be skeptical, but I think it would be worth uh, kind of going through that case. So let's save that. But 